Well, thank you very much. Um, it's exciting to be here. We're glad to, uh, to join you today. And um, I'm thinking about changing my name to something with an X in it now that I know that that is how you get cool. Um, my name is Ryan McGee, and I'm going to just give you a little bit of context to um, to surround the two topics that we that we brought to share with you today. And I think a lot of folks uh, are unaware of the uh, the role that Microsoft plays in the world of security. Um, we we think we're the largest security shop uh, in the world. Um, we're protecting 650,000 organizations analyzing 24 trillion threat signals every day, um, tracking a, a whole bunch of nation state actors, of course, as part of our research and uh, threat intelligence arm, um, and blocking you know, tons and tons of threats uh, in email on endpoints and, and so on. Um, the scale at which we operate is important to us, um, and we think it should be important to our customers because it helps us do uh, great things uh, in the in the space of AI and machine learning, and so this uh, this visibility that we get from doing uh, doing all of this protection work, this capability that we have to see not just a large set of data, but a very diverse set of data, we feel is really important because diversity of data and scale of data is what trains great AI. Um, and the name of the game in security these days is AI because the volume of threats is so large, the volume of uh, signals is so huge. Uh, there's no way that we as, as humans can do it alone. We need to partner with AI. Um, and so this is something that we just do every day. Um, we, uh, we protect our own services and our own infrastructure, but we also protect our customers and it adds up to this, this kind of uh, large volume of stuff. What that means sort of qualitatively is that we understand the complexity um, that, uh, that you experience as an IT person or as a security professional uh, trying to protect an estate that is not entirely owned by the company that you work for, um, not entirely controlled uh, by the organization that's responsible for protecting it, um, but and you, you remain responsible. And so, um, so we get the complexity of trying to protect IoT devices and external users who are part of partner organizations or who are customers of your technology uh, or products, employees uh, watching for uh, accidental leaks of data, intentional leaks of data, watching for actual uh, malicious actor threats, the whole gamut. And so we, we kind of understand, uh, we think in a, in a more realistic way than a lot of uh, other vendors that you might speak with because we have to do this ourselves at such a huge scale every day. So you'll hear a lot of vendors say something like this, and we will too. Uh, our product offering protects end to end as you think about all the sort of threat vectors that you might wanna care about. Uh, we have coverage in all of those places, for example, endpoints, applications, the cloud as a vector, uh, email specifically as an application, identity data, and on and on. And so um, I won't pretend that we're saying anything new and novel there. Um, but what I think is interesting for us is to then take that and deepen it and be multidimensional and comprehensive about it. And so we try to think just beyond the traditional approach of cybersecurity being, you know, keep the bad guys out um, to also there's a lot of overlap with the responsibilities that most organizations have to comply with regulations and policies. There's a lot of technological overlap. There's a lot of practice and policy and, and procedure overlap. Um, and so we think security and compliance with um, regulations and policies go hand in hand. We also think identity is a huge piece of this picture. We, we like to root all of our security strategy in our identity uh, technology. And so that's, that's to us a piece of security. Um, I think other vendors uh, uh, and other people in this space might think of those as sort of separate things. Um, we also think endpoint management is a huge piece of this. We like to work on the, the privacy uh, problem that the world is um, is experiencing. I guess um, you know in the in the digital era, we're all connected more than we'd like to be in some ways, and so uh, privacy is a is a huge concern. It's something that we take very seriously. We know our customers do too, and so um, as we think about the technology set, the solution set that we can provide, we want to make sure that we're comprehensively thinking about all those problem spaces as joined uh, as part of the same problem and part of the same solution rather than separate the, separating them into individual silos. So we do that 
of course, uh, multi-cloud and multi-platform because it's important that we do that for, uh, for everything that our customers might run, whether it's a Mac OS device uh, or an AWS instance um, or a, a, Google Cloud com uh, a Google Cloud deployment, um, we wanna be sure, be sure that we can protect all of that. And so, um, so this is what we think is maybe unique and interesting about the approach that we take uh, that you might not be aware of. What that means in practice, or if, you, uh, if you're a follower of some of the industry analysts, um, if, you, if you read all of the Gartner and Forrester and IDC reports, um, the, the space that we cover with all of that, uh, all that depth is, is 50 or so security categories. Um, everything from anti-phishing to audits and risk assessments to passwordless authentications to host firewalls and, and so on. And so um, I know that sometimes this is a a ridiculously fragmented view of the marketplace for security, um, but it is uh, in some ways real because these are separate companies many times. These are definitely separate categories that our analyst friends track. Um, we think that it's, it's, um, it's doing the industry a disservice for this to be thought of as separate categories. We think it's important that we bring these things together and that the, uh, the industry at large has, uh, has not served customers well by letting this fragmentation continue. Um, and so we're going to bring this together. Um, we're not the first to try and integrate things here. Um, and I think the what I've observed in, in the past as people have attempted integration and have, uh, have brought together multiple categories is that there has been an assumed trade-off of uh, capability for integration. So you can integrate or you can be best at one of these individual categories, but you can't do both. Um, our attempt here is going to be to do both. Um, and so we've brought this through uh, this integration into uh, what we think of as six product families, um, and we'll get into a couple of them today. Um, but in each of these product families, our focus is to be, uh, be best in the breed. And so to be the best at uh, threat protection with Microsoft Defender, be the best at the SIM SOAR uh, category in Microsoft Sentinel, be the best at identity and access management in Azure AD, be the best at endpoint management with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, the best in the privacy management space with Microsoft Priva, uh, and the best in compliance identity, or sorry, um, information protection and risk management with Microsoft 365 compliance. And so we can trot out a lot of Gartner Magic Quadrants and, and Forrester Waves and things like that to prove that. But uh, the important thing is that it's a it's an ethos for us. It's a, um, a strategic imperative that we do this uh, both best of breed and, in, and integrated so that we're not asking customers to trade off between one and the other. And as I said previously, this is about protecting the fullness of what people have deployed in their infrastructure and in the cloud, not just their Microsoft solutions. So it's across cloud platforms, GCP, AWS, and Azure. It's across operating systems, Mac OS, iOS, Android, uh, Linux, and Windows. 